Okay, this um, is a stool culture from a patient who was suffering from, well, diarrhea. And uh, this particular culture type is going to be set up to a just a 5% sheep blood auger plate. Uh, McConkey's, Hectone Enteric, and uh, McConkey's with Sorbitol. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and talk about uh, each of these types of plates and then what's growing on them. So I always insist that my students understand what their what the media that they're using, what it's made out of, and what its function is. Um, so, for example, sheep blood is a supportive differential. Uh, McConkie's is, is a selective differential. Hectone enteric is a selective differential, and then McConkie's with sorbitol is also selective and differential. <clears throat> So, you know, these different qualities uh, give us a lot of information and help, uh, help us in the workup of, of organisms or mainly pathogens. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at our uh, sheep blood plate. Now, the common pathogens for stool, Salmonella, Shigella, E. coli 0157H7, Campylobacter jejuni, and possibly even Staph aureus or uh, Canada species, Canada albicans. Uh, of all the ones that I've listed, uh, they're pretty much all going to grow on sheep blood. The only one would probably would be Campylobacter. Campylobacter, uh, when the culture is set up, gets treated in a different way. It's either going to be put in a Campylobacter broth and then later subcultured, or it will be subcultured <clears throat> will be inoculated directly onto a Campylobacter plate and uh, put in a 42 degree Celsius incubator. All the rest of the plates will just go <clears throat> in a routine, in a uh, uh, 37 degree uh, incubator. So, so as I said, all the, you know, basically a sheep blood, it's gonna grow everything. I mean, I mean, a lot of the things that we're gonna see in stool. Um, so of course, stool is definitely a culture site or a culture type that has normal flora. So a lot of gram negative rods from the family of entro, Entrobacteria ACA. We can see other things in there, uh, Enterococcus species, staph. So it's really a mixed bag of called, uh, different, uh, different organisms. But what am I looking for on the sheep blood plate? So the things that I did mention, I said, uh, as far as pathogens, Staph aureus, which would probably more than likely be a little bit beta hemolytic. Uh, this culture is, t is uh, two days old. It's been incubating for 48 hours. Uh, yeast, yeast have a, uh, a, a definitely a, a uh, recognizable look to them. And at just looking at this plate, I don't see either of those. I see just a lot of, of mixed bacteria here. Probably They're probably just gram-negative rods. So I don't see anything here on the sheep blood plate that concerns me. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the McConkeys. Now, what we're looking for on the McConkeys is, you know, I said before that McConkeys is a selective differential plate. Selective meaning that it's selective for gram-negative organisms. And gram-negative, I mean Entrobacteriaceae and Pseudomonas, not gram-negative like Haemophilus and Neisseria moraxella. So, um, basically, we can assume that the things that are growing on here, for the most part, are going to be members of the family Enterobacteriaceae, or they're members of Pseudomonas. And now the differential quality of uh, McConkie's is the ability to uh, ferment or utilize lactose. So, whenever we're looking at a she uh, sorry, McConkie's plate, we always have to comment on the lactose reaction of the organisms or the colonies that we see. And lactose positive, or meaning the ability to use lactose, being or a lactose fermenter, those colonies are going to be pink. Now, one thing that when, just generally when breeding plates, we want to deal with isolated colonies as far out to the end as we can, right? This was the initial zone of the plate being inoculated. Then we struck it out and struck it out another time and then a fourth time over here, right? Um, so we're going to really be relying on these colonies to assess, you know, what's on this plate. Now, these ones are clearly pink. 
and I have feel, feel very comfortable calling those lactose positive. And then behind here, we have some different looking colonies. And also those generally, uh, when on plates like McConkie's, the longer they're on the plate, if they were pink, they start to revert back to being lighter in color. So, but for me, these ones back here are pink as well. Now, why am I, what's the significance of being a lactose fermenter or non-fermenter on a stool culture on McConkie's? Um, our two, two of our main pathogens, Salmonella and Shigella, are lactose non-fermenters or lactose negative. So they would be clear on the McConkie's plate. So anytime we have clear colonies on McConkie's, we need to do something with those colonies. So on this plate, I don't see anything that concerns me. Um, all of the, the colonies that I see out in this area look like they are lactose positive to me. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at our eight hectone enteric or our HE plate. Now, this is also a uh, selective differential plate. Now, McConkie's is kind of, um, it, it, it's, it's a gram negative, it's selective for gram negative, and this is as well, but this one is even more selective. This one um, is meant to get rid of kind of the more coliform uh, gram negative rods and allow salmonella and uh, shigella to grow. Now, the uh, differential feature, actually this has an additional differential feature as opposed to the, the uh, McConkie's. So basically, uh, we're also judging the color of the colonies. Um, and colonies that are kind of yellowish or salmon or kind of orangish color, those are ones utilizing the lactose um, and or sucrose in the plate. So if we have a, a, a colony that's clear, and when I say clear, it'll be clear and green because the, the original culture, or the original media is, is greenish, kind of a greenish blue when it starts out. That's going to be considered lactose negative, and we're going to need to do something with that. So now we didn't, for some reason in the inoculation process, we didn't get any colonies coming out here. But I can see here that uh, these colonies here are kind of this yellowish color and therefore lactose positive. Now in the back here, we have kind of ones that are kind of the same color. They're kind of greenish. But like I said before, the, the longer a, uh, a culture sits on the plate or a longer that the culture is incubated, bacteria sit on the plate, you know, it probably all of these were this yellowish color and they tend to revert back. So I don't see anything on this plate that is uh, of concern to me. Um, <clears throat> one thing actually I kind of forgot to mention here, the other differential feature of this plate is uh, if we have, a, if the organism ha uh, produces H2S or hydrogen sulfide, and there we would have black colonies, colonies with the black center. Now we tend to associate just clear colonies with shigella on this plate, but if we have ones that are H2S positive and have a black center, we tend to associate those with salmonella. So if you have any uh, colonies on the hectone enteric plate that are clear, or if they have black centers, you need to work those up. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our last plate, our McConkie Sorbitol. So E. coli 0157H7 is an, it's just, it's an E. coli. It's a, a, a variety of E. coli, um, but it's a pathogenic one. And one of the ways that we can differentiate it from other forms of other varieties of E. coli is by the use of Sorbitol. So what we're looking for on this plate is colonies that are going to be clear are going to be what we call sorbitol negative, and those are the ones that we have to watch out for because E. coli 0157H7 is sorbitol negative. Now, once again, we didn't get great isolation here, but I can see kind of looking at the colonies that are a little bit further out that these are all kind of pinkish in color and that they are utilizing sorbitol. So I don't see anything on this plate that is concerning to me. Now, just going over, uh, you know, we've looked at all the plates. Uh, we, I, in this video, I'm not doing a campy plate. Um, I don't have a campy incubator in my student laboratory here, so we're not going to work that one up. But uh, basically, this looks like a normal stool um, culture to me. So um, 
I'm going to go ahead and send out, you know, this has been incubating for two days. I'm going to send out a final report. Uh, you know, first of all, we're going to say how much. So I could say that we have like a moderate amount. So my report is uh, moderate normal stool flora, no pathogens present. So, you know, every computer system is going to have a, an established set of um, comments or reports to give. You know, the comment that I just made about uh, no pathogens present, you're, wherever you're training at, they may have a, a different way of saying that. So don't, but the basic idea is that this is a normal stool culture and we're not going to work up anything on it and we're just uh, letting the physician know that.